knowing exactly what you're supposed to be considering at which part of the day, how many things are included, it can actually be a little bit daunting and the likelihood is you don't know what's involved. I'm talking about wedding flowers, guys. You literally might be considering, oh, we need some flowers for the wedding table and we need bouquets and buttonholes, but there's actually a lot more to it, if you want there to be. So let's dive into this topic. Hello, lovely couples, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner, owner of Bluebird Creative, and I provide wedding planning goodness and digital downloads for the modern couple. So guys, this week we are talking wedding flowers, and essentially we're doing a little bit of a checklist for all the different types of wedding flowers that you might want to consider during your wedding planning and on your wedding day. I've also created a digital download for you as a, another checklist just for you guys to kind of go through and see, yes, I want to include that, no, I don't want to include that. So when you're reaching out to your florists, you know what to ask for. So let's dive into it this week's video, guys, and make sure you're following me over on Instagram and TikTok as well bluebird underscore creative where you will find some raw real honest chats and convos as well as our real weddings and just some fun over there right let's dive into it okay guys so let's start with bridal party flowers so the different elements that you're going to consider here are bride's bouquet if you're having bridesmaids, do you want them to have bouquets? Perhaps you don't want them to have bouquets. Perhaps you want them to have flower crowns. Perhaps you're interested in bracelets or hoops. This kind of encompasses like flower girls as well. So consider, are they having flowers and therefore what type of flowers? So there's a couple of different options for you to consider there. Next, there's buttonholes. So that's usually for the best man, obviously the groom, any ushers, sometimes father of the bride, father of the groom, anyone sort of in the close knit wedding party. In my mind, there's no rules. You can give them to the people that you want to. It doesn't have to just be those in the same suits or however you're doing it. Because obviously everybody has their own rules and does their own things on their wedding day. But that kind of gives you a bit of an overall as to who might have them. But it's something that you're going to want to consider when you're looking at wedding flowers. And then finally, we've got corsages. So that usually goes towards sort of mother of the bride, maybe mother of the groom, that kind of thing, maybe your nan. Again, I'm very much the you do you mentality, guys. So there's no set hard and fast rules here, but that's another element that you what might want to consider when you're looking at the different elements for your flowers. So let's move into the wedding ceremony itself. Now there's lots of different options for you. So obviously you've already discussed, or we've already discussed, the bridal party flowers and the groom's party flowers. But the ceremony itself, you could consider having flower arches at the entrance to the ceremony or the church or the space that you're getting married. You might want to have an arch or some form of floral decoration as a backdrop to where you're actually getting married, right up on the altar, that kind of space. So you might want floral arches, you might want a moon gate, which is a big hoop, and that can be styled up with flowers. There's so many different options. So that's something that you need to consider. You might decide that you just want two large urns either side of where you're getting married. You might want two large urns, and then you might want another two large urns at the end of the aisle, or perhaps at the entrance again to the church or the space that you're getting married. So consider kind of where you want them, what your budget is and how many flowers you kind of want. Another space you can decorate for your ceremony is the aisle. So slightly more traditional is pew ends. That is flowers that are tied onto sort of the aisle end chairs. As lovely as they are, they're not quite as good for repurposing. So do consider that. Another really lovely option is meadows. And those are sort of floor gardens, as I like to call them. So essentially they're kind of like long, oblong shaped arrangements that are usually sort of made from chicken wire and moss depending on your florist and their style and then they have flowers growing up out of them so they look really wild really beautiful and very natural and those can be placed along the aisle on the ends of the rows those are really easy to repurpose and can make any other space look amazing as well so they can be repurposed for the cake table or lots of other spaces that we can talk about in a bit so that's another space that you can decorate for your wedding ceremony as well. You may also want to put something on the registrar's table to decorate it up. Apart from that, that's kind of the main areas that you're going to go for. So consider those when you're thinking about your ceremony flowers and also have a think about what can we have in that space 
that's easy to transport or move because I'm very much of the mindset, guys, that flowers flowers make a wedding to me. I absolutely love them. But I hate the idea of flowers only being seen and used for 30 minutes of your day. So I'm so here for repurposing and we do it with all our clients. If we can repurpose any flowers from their wedding ceremony to their wedding breakfast or another part of the day, then we absolutely will do. So do consider that when you're choosing your ceremony flowers. Can they be repurposed? Is it easy to transport? Where else could they go? And so on. Right, let's move on to the drinks reception. So typically people don't tend to go too overboard at that this point, but elements that you might want to consider might perhaps be some arrangements for the bar. So you might want to decorate the front of the bar or on top of the bar. Perhaps you want some bud vases just to sort of decorate and make things look pretty. If you've got tables or poser tables, again, some bud vases along with some candles just look really pretty just to tie things in and keep everything just sort of in the same theme, the same aesthetic and the same vibe. You can also get foliage. So for example, there's these lovely poser tables with linens on and you can literally just have some ruscus or some foliage tied around them. Again, it's just adding the aesthetic and keeping it kind of running throughout the whole of the day. And finally, during the drinks reception, if you've got any signage that's out at that point in the day, you might want to consider some flowers to decorate that. So perhaps it's just decorating the signage itself. Perhaps it's decorating a big sort of display for the signage sort of underneath it at the bottom it's a couple of examples that we've done previously here for you to have a look at so you can really make impact and as i've said in my trends video which if you haven't seen i will link it up here for you it's a good one displays are definitely going to be a trend so this might be something that you want to consider okay so let's move into the wedding breakfast which i won't lie guys is my favorite space for flowers you can get so creative there's so many options that you can do with flowers and just styling the space in general i love it it's my favorite part of any wedding design there's also loads of loads of options so it's very difficult for me to kind of give you a full breakdown but the areas that you want to be considering are obviously the tables so if you're having rounds then you need to go for a specific style that's going to fit in the center of a round table you can go high and you can go low you just don't want to go medium in height because obviously that's going to plop, block people's view of each other and you don't want to do that on trestles either so but don't be afraid to go with high arrangements they don't block people's views there's a lot of them where florists will really consider how a high arrangement will work so that people can still see each other and talk to each other around the table. But essentially you can have high on plimps, you can have bud vases, you could have low arrangements in small urns, you can do lots of different things, you can just have foliage. There's so many fun things you can do on your table arrangements, but that's one of the things that you want to consider is table arrangements. That goes for all your guest tables as well as the top table as well. You might be able to repurpose things from the ceremony. You might be able to repurpose some of the bridesmaids bouquets and turn them into table arrangements as well. So do consider that. Another element that you might want to consider during the wedding breakfast is perhaps a backdrop to the top table. So perhaps you had a lovely backdrop in your ceremony and you're just going to repurpose it and sit it behind the top table. Perhaps it's a completely new arrangement and it's going to be set up by hind or slightly to the side of the top table. So you might have urns framing the table. You may again have a moon gate that's got lots of flowers around it and maybe a neon sign hanging. You may have meadows in front of the top table lining all the way along. So it's like a garden growing up in front of it. So many gorgeous, gorgeous options that you literally can go wild with. Something else that you might want to consider for the wedding breakfast is the ceiling. Now this is obviously a bit more on the heavier budget kind of side of things, but if you really want to go wild, you love flowers, then you can consider actually decorating the ceiling with florals or with foliage. So there's loads of different ways you can do that. Just having cables and like really thin wires running across and then lining them with foliage can look absolutely beautiful. You can have flowers hanging down, you can have hanging installation. So if you're getting married in a marquee, for example, you might want a round foliage installation. There's loads of different options that you can do. So don't forget about the ceiling as well, because it really can transform a space. And then finally, 
evening reception slash what I'm gonna call as extras. So the cake table is an area that you're probably going to want to dress up with flowers, whether it's having fresh flowers on the cake itself, whether it's having bud vases decorated around the cake table, depending on how big it is, whether it's having meadows growing up in front of the cake table. So if you've got a linen table, you might have the foliage and the meadows in front of it. So it's kind of growing up and you've got a real amazing display. See guys, trend displays. These can look absolutely stunning. And then for cake cutting photos as well, really does make an impact. Again, any other signage, so table plan signage, you want, might want to make a big moment of that. So flowers work really nicely there as well. If you've got a guest book table, any other sort of like signage that you've got, you might want to be adding flowers to that, foliage to that, just to kind of dress it up. None of this is a, you have to do all of these things, guys. Just to reiterate, this is almost like a checklist of things to consider and to go, do we want that? Yes, do we want that? No, we don't want that. It's completely up to you and again, I'm very you do you, but this just hopefully gives you like a rundown of the different things to consider when you are thinking about flowers for your wedding day. And kind of when you're pulling your design together as well, it really gives you an idea of how you want it to look, whether you want to have those big moment displays, whether you actually just want to keep it really simple and beautiful, it's completely up to you. But hopefully this is giving the, you the information to kind of know what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what you want and what you don't want. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to grab the free PDF below as well with the flower checklist. I hope you have a fantastic week. Happy planning. See you on the next one.